These 10 minimalist guidelines are awesome rules that will help you simplify your home and your life. Grab your tea and let's go. My very favorite rule to start with, which may or may not work for you, but it is creating a capsule wardrobe, which is super easy. I'm going to tell you how in just a minute. It is about creating a simplified wardrobe and a capsule wardrobe is where almost every piece can work with other pieces to make easy outfits. And why would this be helpful for a minimalist lifestyle? Because the more we simplify decisions and don't have to go through our clothing, our daily lives are easier and better. And it also is way easier than it sounds. The first step is to declutter anything that does not fit, look good on you, or that you don't wear. And now you might be worried about those things that could fit soon, but I do have a video all about that and I will link it below. The thing is, if you are likely to fit it soon, hang on to it. But also, are you going to wear it when you can fit it? Just ask yourself that. The second step is to sort out any neutrals, blacks, grays, whites, beiges. And the third is to sort out the colors that you have and do they clash? And if only a few clash, do not worry. Recognize what works and what doesn't work. And there, yes, there are some seasonal things that may not fit, for example, I wear a lot more maroon in the winter than I do in the summer. So in the summer, I would typically replace that with pink. Now, some people might say like, why well, I have two different like seasonal wardrobes. I live on, in Canada and in the summer it gets really hot and in the winter it gets really cold. Like I do not wear short sleeve t-shirts for about six months of the year, but then the rest of the year, I'm not wearing long sleeve t-shirts. So it works out really well. <laughs> And around Christmas, for example, I would wear red and you know, is a, is a whole thing. So anyway, so what you can do is you can grab any top and any bottom and pretty much everything will work together. And it is great. You can go very strict and declutter anything that doesn't work, or you can just be a little bit loosey goosey with it. And I love it because a capsule wardrobe is great. A 2020 rule for minimalist living. If you have ever said, but I could use it one day, this tip is for you. The 2020 rule makes decluttering the just in case stuff an absolute breeze. The minimalist Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, they invented the super awesome rule. And it goes, if you don't use something and you can replace it for less than $20 in less than 20 minutes, you can declutter it. The reason why I love this tip so much is because often we hold on to things because we think we might use it one day. And this is basically what our garages, sheds, kitchens, and storage units are absolutely full of. Now I know you might say, but I might use it one day. Really, it just seems awfully wasteful to declutter something and to spend money on it again. Shouldn't I just keep it? Because the point is to declutter things and not to keep them. The chances that you will not need to repurchase this item is very, very high because you're not using them now. Now I've only once repurchased something that I decluttered. It was six two liter kombucha jars because I was like, I am not going to be making kombucha anymore. And then I changed my mind. But here's the thing. I don't actually regret decluttering those jars because they were not kicking around my house. Six huge jars for like a year. I'm okay with that. Think of all the things in boxes that you have not looked at for years or decades. Things that you're storing. Do you want to keep things taking up your storage space. Another awesome rule that I live by is having a routine. Now it's the little things in life that make a beautiful and peaceful life. And I love having a loose outline to my day. Now we can be pretty scattered in my house and having a clear routine is very helpful. I just want to be clear. We don't love routines, but we know that they're helpful. So it's like a bowling ball. If you're bowling and you have those little bumpers up, the routine just sort of keeps your ball from going into the gutter. It just keeps you on the right track. If you're trying to declutter, routine is a great way to make a conscious effort to work on your physical space. What is the best way to create a routine? And now the very first thing to do, identify the major priorities for the day that you have to do. And I mean, I'm not saying that forever you need to schedule things like your meals and work and school and sleep. I mean, those often are just sort of normal part rhythms of the day. But just for now, we're, you're creating a schedule and then you can like figure out the rest. Okay, so next, what is usually on your to-do list? Any chores, any commitments, 
Exercise. If I did not write exercise down quite often, I would forget it. So I write down the things I want to get done because I can be so forgetful. I have ADHD, so does most of my family. And also the nurse in me says that this should be a priority. So maybe, you know, you would put it at the beginning, but like I said, I would forget it. This is also where you would put decluttering in. So add all of that to your list. Then what you do is you plunk the to-do list items amongst the priority items. And I love the idea of anchoring one activity to another, like decluttering when you arrive home from work or doing yoga after dinner, which might be hard because your stomach, might, it doesn't matter. Anyway, something like that. Post the schedule on your fridge or somewhere else that you see it. And it is not meant to be rigid, but to be a loose guideline to help you stay on track with your goals and daily habits like decluttering. Another amazing rule is that no is your best friend. This is a rule for a minimalist social life. Now, maybe you are super extroverted and you love being around people, but for me, sometimes I regret committing to certain things. And perhaps a family member has roped you into going to a craft fair you're just not really interested in, or other times you have agreed to do maybe something with the kids' school and you truly just don't have the bandwidth. Now, I love the saying that no is a complete sentence. Now, a lot of us say yes to things we don't want to do because we feel obligated to. We're people pleasers. We want to make people happy. And that hurts us. Saying no to most things is the quickest way to take control of your life. Now, I'm not saying don't do anything and say no to everybody and everything, but consider saying this instead. I need to check my calendar. I will let you know if I can make it. What I like about this is that instead of saying, um, yeah, and then having to back out later, if you're feeling overwhelmed or overscheduled or whatever, instead you're basically like, it's almost like it's a no until it becomes a yes. I love this. One of the things that I learned on my minimalist journey is that I can be a bit of a people pleaser, as I mentioned, and I used to do things because I wanted people to like me or to not get mad at me. And the reality is that you only have one life and you need to be the one making the conscious choice to fill up your calendar. Another example of when saying no is a good idea is when people want to give you their thing. So perhaps they have been decluttering and they are like, I have this box of things for you. And this happens a lot. And sweet family members, you know, like they're doing their own decluttering, which is absolutely lovely, but it's nice for them too. But at the same time, it's kind of unfair. Here's why. Because when we declutter our things to other people, or in this case, they are decluttering something to you, we're releasing ourselves from deciding to let something go. Like we're kind of like abdicating that responsibility. And that is just not fair. Another awesome rule is to buy new things as a minimalist. Now, whenever I'm going to buy something, I want to make sure that it has a home. Now, I used to go shopping, buy a new sweater, yet my closet was crammed full. I wasn't like purposefully shopping. Or I'd buy a small kitchen apply, and then later I would just throw it on an already cluttered kitchen counter. One of the good things about this rule is it makes you pause before you buy something. And now I find myself asking, do I need to declutter something to make room for this? Or do I really need this item? A diehard minimalist might rarely buy new things, but I just like to live with fewer things in my life. I am minimalist light, as some of you may know. I have hobbies. I garden, I cook, I have a pasta roller. Some of those hobbies require physical possessions. However, I am very thoughtful and very, very careful before bringing new things into my home. In fact, I took about a year to decide whether or not to get the pasta roller, which I do not regret. And I absolutely love the simple rule of a place for everything and everything in its place. It's just mwah, gorgeous. And buying quality is a great minimalist principle. And if it doesn't break the bank, that is even better. Quality sleep, I can't think of much more that is important than having a good sleep. I have been sleeping on this very comfy birch mattress for over three months now, and it is 
marvelous. My husband had a cold last month and he had to sleep on our old mattress. He said he missed our Birch Lux mattress and his back was sore for the old mattress. And he Birch makes mattresses that are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. There is also no polyurethane or fiberglass. And that is super important to me because we spend a third of our lives on our mattress and I don't want to be breathing in those fumes. There was also no off gassing when we set up our mattress because your respiratory system, it's, you know, part of your vital organs, you know, your lungs, they're important. Our mattress, it came straight to our door. We laid it out on the bed and inflated it. And it was very entertaining. It also came with two very fluffy and comfortable pillows right there. I love to lean on them while I read my Stephanie Plum novels. I knew it was him. Ha! And you know how I always say that food, water, and shelter are important? I would say that your bed falls under shelter and obviously sleep is massively important for our energy and our health and our immune system. Having a bad sleep can increase your risk for infections, viruses, inflammation, and more, which so many people struggle with. So I think it's very important to prioritize your sleep and yourself, and you might want to consider upgrading your bed. I love my Birch mattress, and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch Living. Their President's Day sale is running now. It's the perfect time to upgrade your sleep with 25% off a Birch mattress plus two free EcoRest pillows, visit birchliving.com slash minimalist home to find out more about this limited time offer. So thanks to Birch for sponsoring this video. Remember this rule, perfectionism is a bad habit and don't fall for it. Not only is it a bad habit, but it's also impossible to be perfect. Literally nothing on this earth can be perfect. So one of the things that I've learned in my own personal growth journey is that there is no perfect thing and there are no perfect people. Now you can either be productive or you can be a perfectionist. And if you find yourself spending time finding the right strategy, the right boxes, the right donation center, you're not only being a perfectionist, but you're procrastinating. And I love the minimalist principle of just relaxing and letting life be simple. Do the thing and let it be what it will be. But make sure you declutter your house. Practice the joy of letting go. One of the main themes in minimalism is decluttering, obviously. And when a lot of us declutter, we're not exactly happy. Now I can't say I'm always happy when I let things go, but for the most part, I'm like, yay, this is leaving my life, which is a good thing because then there is more space to breathe. There's more space for other things to come in. I'm not talking about physical things exactly. One of the reasons why a lot of us struggle with letting go is we were maybe taught from a young age that we need to gather things for survival reasons, whether it was because we were affected by the depression or like in my mom's case, she always taught me because she was taught to keep things for good. Once you realize that one of the benefits of minimalism is creating a simple life and whenever you declutter something, you are one step closer to that simple living. Take your time and consider the weight being lifted as you continue growing your new skills as a minimalist, you will recognize that the long haul is worth it and you are gaining more and more freedom. There truly is so much joy in letting go uh, on this minimalist journey. And the joy is in the process as much as it is in the results. And the more you do it, the easier and more joyful it will become. Another good one is to have some own digital and social media rules for yourself. Now, when we practice digital minimalism, we can really reduce distractions and be way more productive. And I'm not saying like we need to be like super productive, but like, let's be honest, social media isn't exactly good for a lot of us. We might notice that we are much more creative and maybe we have more time to spend with the humans in our lives. Here are a few ideas. Email. As you declutter and you go minimalist, you can create helpful rules around digital things in addition to material possessions. Now, did you ever realize what a drag having a bursting inbox is or having to wade through newsletter after newsletter just to find an email from your bank? Yep, me too. And yes, I do have a newsletter. And if you don't find it helpful, 
unfollow it. One of my favorite new habits is to tidy up my inbox on Fridays. I do my finances on Fridays and my inboxes on Fridays. And I sit down after a day is done. I pop a chocolate in my mouth, obviously with a cup of tea. And I spend a small amount of time decluttering my inbox because it doesn't take long if you do it regularly. Another great thing to focus on decluttering is having a strict set of rules around social media. I know it's like, Strict set of rules, I'm an adult, but really we kind of need it with social media. I know I do. Have you ever realized how much time you spend on Instagram or Facebook? Your phone gingerly reminds you that you've gone over your three hour day. Yikes, my phone will be like, it's nine o'clock. Don't you want to stop being on Instagram? And I'm like, oh my gosh, how do we fix it? It could be hard, but I like the idea of starting good habits with the old routine I mentioned above. So you can add when you want to access your social media to your schedule, or perhaps you only look at social media after lunch and then you delete it or hide it off of your phone. I've actually been deleting Instagram from my phone and it's been very helpful. And then I'll download it when I need it or respond to somebody and then I delete it again. Another really good guideline is mindful living. One of my favorite parts of being a minimalist is to have the mindset of being minimal in my everyday life. Mindfulness is being mentally active in what you are doing, living in the present moment. Being mindful is one of the simple changes that you can make each day to focus more on life. Here are just a few ways that you can be mindful and live a more purposeful life. Mindful buying. I already mentioned before about having an awareness of where things go once you buy them, that it is helpful. But consider mindful shopping. Whenever you are buying anything from food to clothes, consider that you are perhaps becoming a minimalist. And as a rule, you're focusing on having fewer possessions. So sometimes I pass by random things in the grocery store and think, oh my gosh, a chiote paste. I saw a recipe for that once. I should buy it. But should I? No, I don't even know where that recipe went and I bought it and I never used it because that's a true story and I don't, I don't know. I'm not even sure if I pronounced it correctly. Also, do you really need another comfy sweater if you have 10 in several colors? Probably not. Mindful finances. Ever since I started using the you need a budget, any wine nabbers in the house, comment below. Life has been easier. And this is not, not obviously not sponsored by them, but I really, really like wine app and it is just really helpful. They have a serious following because they are such a great company and the system works really well. Although there is a serious learning curve, but once I figured it out, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So finances are one of the most important areas of your life because if they're out of control, life can get even more stressful and creating a simple budget, it can allow for awareness of where and how you want to spend your money. And that can be absolutely life-changing. For me, one of the most important things is to live simply and being mindful of my finances helps. Even mindful eating is helpful. I remember years ago watching an episode of Oprah where a lady was eating an apple and some Parmesan cheese and she just sat down, she ate it and it was all about mindfulness and just like being in the moment. And I will admit I'm a bit of a foodie and I kind I think that sounds really, really nice. And yet when I sit down, the first thing I do is I reach for my phone. So often we live with mental clutter, distracting us from what we're doing, but mindfulness is a great way to connect with life and what we are actually doing. Mindful everything else. How about mindful exercise or mindful walks? Talk about peaceful, mindful practices. Just being present with yourself in nature or on your treadmill. Even like when we're having a conversation with somebody, focusing on what they're saying, not thinking about what you're gonna say and what you're gonna go and do later and what groceries you need to buy. Sometimes I find myself like watching a movie with my family and think like making a to-do list. No, don't do that. Gratitude, one of the most basic principles in many religions is gratitude. And gratitude is the practice of appreciating things in your life, whether they be people, experiences, or even material things. Gratitude might seem like a buzzword, but I think gratitude is an absolutely lovely way to lighten your mental load because it can really help to reduce stress and even encourage some self-reflection. In fact, there's a great quote, which is gratitude is the sweetest thing in a seeker's life, in all human life, if there is gratitude in your heart, 
then there will be tremendous sweetness in your eyes. And that's by Sri Chin Moy. Now I used to be kind of a grump when things were not going well. I know it's hard to believe. Now I realize that there can be gratitude in everything, even in the hard stuff, truly the hard stuff. And I do still prefer the fun stuff, obviously. But whenever I'm exercising, for example, I literally will thank God for my legs. And I am just so happy to have strong legs that allow me to walk or to run. If I open a window, I take a deep breath and I smell the fresh air. I'm thankful for that experience. And if you start looking for things to be grateful for, you might notice your mood and your mental health improve. And this is just honestly, just another great way to live a minimalist, simpler lifestyle. On your road to decluttering, you might feel like things are moving slowly, but you want to declutter more and faster. I will show you how to do that right here. I hope something great happens for you today. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.